And my name is Mauricio. I'm the founder of uh, Faircap. I was born in Peru uh, and now I live in Barcelona. But basically, um, because I was born in Peru and during the 90s there was a big cholera outbreak, uh, I was always conscious about water. Uh, my background is in economics, so I was never, uh, was never related to technology or um, chemistry or uh, biology. But um, somehow I got connected to the maker movement uh, and I had this idea in the rainforest, like walking, you couldn't drink the water from the natural streams in Peru. And then researching, I saw that this was a huge problem around the world. 800 million people don't have access to clean drinking water. But actually, people who don't drink tap water is even much larger, like about half of the world. So uh, water is a very, very big issue. And um, because I, I was involved in this maker movement uh, through an open source uh, event that was held in France uh, back in 2015, uh, I met this, like, community and uh, uh, the idea was to prototype this uh, with 3D printing and then uh, through design and then fabrication we ended up making a, a, an actual final product that actually has been tested in the, in the lab uh, and the idea was to make it very small uh, that it can fit into a plastic bottle so this is like a coca-cola or like a soda drink uh, thread and you basically uh, grab water from uh, any stream or the river or uh, like a water well or like a rain water container and then you screw it uh, inside uh, and then you can drink just uh, clean water uh, without any bacteria and without any sediment so if it's very turbid uh, this makes it very transparent and also safe to drink um, and the idea was to make it for emergencies at the beginning uh, but then we saw that there's an even bigger issue uh, also in urban uh, places in developing countries but as well in, in many uh, cities that are developed. So basically, um, first the technology was invented 40 years ago, so we're taking technology that has been available but nobody yet has done something so small, uh, so universally accessible, let's say, and also so low cost. Uh, so those are kind of like the, the main uh, points, uh, but at the same time uh, we might want to make it transparent. Uh, so we all the design was done collaboratively uh, with different people, with the different experts who contributed to the to the main uh, final product. Um, that's a different from the difference from uh, companies that normally they have a closed uh, product. They sometimes they they say that they, they invent new technology, but actually they're using things that have been available uh, and that's kind of like a bit more of the marketing messages that they want to you know to make people believe that uh, this is a, like a unique product uh, in our case we want to share this uh, and also we want to do the testing collaboratively and very open so we came up with like a <coughs> very low cost um, uh, one dollar incubator basically you can take a cardboard box uh, put this uh, with a USB powered uh, source like a phone charger or like a small solar panel uh, and you can incubate uh, very low cost uh, uh, E. coli plates uh, and we want to share this with anyone uh, so basically if you're like in Africa or in South America or in Asia uh, you can get this uh, do the testing of the uh, raw water and also the filtered water and see the difference uh, for example this we took it in Lebanon in a Syrian you know, refugee camp and we could also show to the people like uh, these are E. coli uh, colonies and this is like clean water from the, the filter. Uh, so that's also a big difference from other companies uh, because we, uh, it might not be perfect and we want to know like in what situations it might not work uh, because maybe the different aqua water qualities uh, affect the filter. Uh, but we want to be transparent about it and we want to make a product that really works and helps the people and makes an impact. Yeah, so uh, it depends on the water quality. <clears throat> so if it's more turbid, probably it's going to last less. But we have calculated around a thousand liter uh, lifespan. Uh, you can make it last longer if you uh, maintain it, let's say you wash it at, you know, from time to time uh, so that the membranes don't get clogged. Uh, but that's one of the things that we want to really uh, 
work with the community basically. So apart from uh, testing like the, the that it removes bacteria, we also want to know like if people you know, have been using it for a year or, or two years or, or less also and find out you know, in real life how it works. Uh, because also compared to a normal company, uh, they would say like this lasts for like a million gallons. There's actually companies that uh, have these kind of claims and uh, that's probably not possible. Uh, but uh, in our case, you know, we want to, we have a, like, a lab uh, number, but we want to test this in the field and, and see what uh, people think about it. Uh, so yeah, there's a few ways uh, that we're planning or, or we would like to, to, to do it. Uh, one is to do like a small pilot first. Uh, so we take, uh, right now, for example, we can ship the filters there so that people can test them and try them and see if they uh, trust it, if they uh, adopt it at the beginning and also if they can use it and it's going to be useful for them in the long run. Uh, so that could be maybe like a small pilot. Uh, then there's a few ways. Uh, we want to make it at cost uh, for humanitarian purposes. Uh, also, if there's any humanitarian organization who wants to fund the that cost, you know, this could be given out for free as well. Um, but of course, sometimes when you give it for free, then people don't value it, maybe they're not going to use it. So ideally, somehow this would be ideal that people would uh, pay some, even a small amount uh, of money, uh, I don't know, like two or three dollars, for example, for each filter, uh, which probably is going to last like more than a year, for example. Uh, and then you have clean water for a year for this small amount of money. Um, and it could even become uh, an, an entrepreneurial opportunity for local um, uh, vendors or like people who go from house to house to you know, promote this. And that would be the ideal model actually for distribution because then uh, people can get um, involved in, into this and also like, promote uh, health and um, you know, the importance of drinking clean water. <coughs> clean water. Uh, and um, and then in the long run, I mean, because we have like a, this idea of making a, like a buy one and give one uh, model, so people who travel, you know, to to different countries and people who do like outdoor activities or camping or hiking, uh, you know, normally you would buy something like this from a company for a very expensive, uh, for a very big amount. Uh, the idea is that people uh, would buy, for example, for 20 euros one filter and then give out um, uh, this family version that we're working on, which basically um, provides water for a, for a whole family, so it's not an individual filter. And you would connect it uh, like this uh, into like a jerry can, and then you can pump uh, water like this straight uh, with a very nice flow rate. and. Um, so that way, um, I think with fewer filters, you would have reached much more, you know, more people. Uh, so basically, you would have this one per household. Uh, and right now, you know, we want to target this for a cost of less than ten dollars. So that's also very uh, affordable at the beginning. But hopefully, we can subsidize that with the buy one give one uh, program, and then uh, work with locally with uh, institutions, organizations, or local uh, uh, small vendors or uh, a way to distribute that because right now I think we solved the, the actual uh, science and technical aspect of this. Uh, I think it's going to be adopted because we have tested this, this in Liban and Lebanon and people really liked it and they trusted it when you show it. Uh, but then now it's more about the distribution and the scaling of the project. So, so with that we need to work with uh, like organizations locally and people uh, in the countries because we're a very small team, so and we love cooperation, and, and that's I mean, this is you know like uh, our mission, like to, to make an impact and, and not just uh, design or develop a technology, but actually have it being used by people in uh, having you know preventing uh, diseases and and so. On. so.